You might have seen uh, Facebook's new timeline, a uh, new feature that lets you see all your life. But Memo Lane had that a few months earlier and goes way beyond Facebook and lets you see TripIt and Flickr photos and YouTube videos and tweets and other things all rolled into a timeline where you can go back and see what you did like March of last year and see uh, exactly what you posted. It's a really unique product and we're going to see it right now. Who are you? I'm uh, Eric Lachey. I'm the co-founder of Memolane. Uh, Memolane is uh, basically the timeline of your life. And what does? Why do we need a timeline? I mean, I, Mark Zuckerberg's talking about timeline. What you know? And you're talking about timeline. Yeah, it's why suddenly do we become very popular these days. Um, well, uh, the basic notion is um, what we see is that basically everyone is getting more and more active in posting their lives on the internet. Uh, and contrary to many believe it's actually happening much outside Facebook. And, uh, and the number of, uh, of amazing, great uh, social media services is ever growing. Uh, you have uh, Foursquare, you have uh, uh, Tribit, you have uh, Goala, you have uh, uh, Foodspotting, you have uh, SoundCloud. All these services all captures different parts of your life. Uh, and it's all happening now. So more and more people are capturing more and more of their life on the internet and it's capturing and presenting all these moments. But the problem is, I think also, is now how do we consume this? And I think that's one of the challenges that many of the services today have is that if you're not there in the moment to consume it, if you're not sitting there in front of the live stream on Twitter, on Facebook or Foursquare or anywhere else, then you actually miss out. Uh, so basically what we wanted to do is, is uh, try to create a new browsing experience for social media and indexing everything you do uh, on time and present it on a very nice, easily uh, viewable uh, timeline that allows you to see, search, and share. Yeah, finding value in Twitter is really difficult, e even with the search engine, right? You can search for uh, a tweet, but it, first of all, the Twitter search engine only goes back so far. It doesn't go, it go back years uh, yet. And even if you could go back years, you, you can't pull the tweet from March 11th of 2010 where you might have been in a restaurant with somebody cool and you want to pull up that tweet and you want to see the Flickr photo you did and stuff like that. So, so exactly like, as, uh, like the notion like we've seen see, search and share, the whole discovery of things is we are seeing a lot of our users are coming back and saying, you know, I tried to find it on Facebook, tried to find it on Twitter. Or what, where was it I actually posted this? And then they come on Memolane and they search and boof, it's there. Yeah. And, and what we really emphasize is a nice visualization of their search result. Yeah, you can see other people's results, right? Or, or is this a private thing? Explain how so, that works. So the, the way we've done it uh, in our new version, it's very much on the lane you are viewing, you can search. So yeah. if you are going into the uh, Robert Scoble lane, then you can search and you will find content relevant on that lane or you have your own lane or your friend's lane or the lanes that you built with your friends, you can search within that. That's how we, what now, we focus on now. But I, can, I, I have a choice of making my lane public or private, right? Yeah, so privacy is you know, very uh, close to us and I think uh, many different social media networks have struggled in, in you know, defining privacy in a nice way. Uh, what we are trying to do very clearly is as you at any of your services, you define how you want to share it. Yeah. Many would say, you know, Twitter, make it public, Tribit, make it public, Foursquare, make it public. While Flickr picture, I would like to make it private or f only share it with friends only. Um, and, and that's why you like to see lanes where you might think, okay, uh, it doesn't have a lot of content, but it might be because you're not friends with the actual uh, content owner. Yeah. You're a Rackspace customer, I remember that. Absolutely, right? a happy one. Thank you. That's not a prerequisite to get on our <laughs> show, but we appreciate that. And we're in the new Rackspace San Francisco office, which will be turning into our studio. But um, what's that like? What, and, and what are the technical challenges of joining data from all these different social networks? Yeah, as, as we built this, actually, we, we started up uh, on, on actually on Amazon uh, because that was 
you know the first protocol um, and um, and what we what we're doing is actually we are rendering all the data from all these different services so we are not storing we don't have a, a you know huge uh, demand for storing data but we have a very very uh, high demand for being able to make it accessible very very fast yep. so that's where we actually when we were about to launch, we realized that the current setup we had at that time would not support us in the in the in the way of, of being able to have uh, like instant accessibility and where we needed dedicated servers. And and uh, and we we researched and we we stumbled upon Rackspace and then we are very happy to to be using you guys. That's why we we say uh, cloud is for everyone but not for everything, right? <laughs> yeah. Because so yeah. cloud is. Uh, for people who don't know, you're you're sharing resources on a on a set of servers, mm -hmm. right? And there might be a hundred companies all sharing those resources. You've bought your own server, so you have the whole the whole server or the yes. whole rack of servers in this case. And, and and for that, like the servers that we have dedicated are the ones that really is the engine of Memoline. Yeah. Then we are using for search results and so on, indexing all of that. We are using that on on cloud storage as well, also from Rackspace. But but so we, we are finding a fine balance. of Where is it that we have our core where we really need to have the engine like Formula One tuned? Yeah. What's the what's the challenge? What's the other challenge of bringing all this new data? Because lots of developers are going to uh, use the APIs that you're using to talk to Facebook or talk to Twitter and get some data, get some identity, right? Because yes. everybody's trying to become the identity server of the internet, yeah. and Facebook and Twitter yeah. and the lead. Google's coming on strong on that. Yeah. What, what are you learning by building a service that talks to all these, all these uh, social media companies? <laughs> yeah, one of course we would wish that it would have been the same developer that built all the APIs uh, yeah. across because there's, even though we are using uh, the OAuth standard, uh, there's very much uh, uh, difference in the implementation and what, uh, how, like what are the different uh, data we can access. Um, second, what we what we are focused on is you know this nice presentation on a timeline, and and even though you should think that the basic was like when is it recorded in time, some services actually don't just support the basic of allowing the user to set what is the relevant time for this content that I produce on YouTube or on, on Flickr or somewhere else. Uh, and, and that creates some challenges when you actually want to have it become a documentation of what you've done in life. What was the actual time that you posted not this and not the time when it was uploaded on that service. Yeah. Um, of the third uh, issue that we do have is of course as, as, as these type of APIs change from time to time. It does put a requirement on our side to constantly you know, keep up to date. And which is why, of course, since the day of dawn, we've been uh, talking about uh, and we are working on creating our own, our own API, allowing any third party out there to push data to us so we don't need to pull. Because there's also a big uh, challenge when you think about, we right now support 15 services that we need to constantly go out and pull data to update the lanes, right? And wouldn't it be great if we could just have that pushed from the individual service when there's new content being produced? Very cool. Where, where are you? Th where do you think uh, this is going in the next few six months, maybe? Yeah, no. So we we actually launched our new uh, version here last week. Uh, we were very excited uh, to finally come out with a, a long-awaited uh, update to Memolane. Um, we have emphasized a number of, of cool new features uh, to make it even more engaging for users. Uh, your life is not just about one timeline. Your life is consisting of multiple timelines, like uh, the time that you were uh, back in high school or the time when you were on vacation with your best friends or your uh, wedding or something like that. You create lanes with your friends, with your family, with your kids. Uh, and we pull in all that content and suddenly there's a lot of different fantastic lanes that come to life. Um, so we, we launched that and we now optimize it for touch. So also it will look very cool on an iPad or an Android tablet. Yeah. Um, and we are now really focusing on releasing nearly every week some new good features that will make it even more engaging because one thing is your timeline, right? Your lane. Yeah. But what about all the great things that 
where you have an interest to follow people on memo lane. So that's where we are going to emphasize very much over the next six months. Interesting. The data that I see in my current memo lane, and, and we'll finish up with this, mm. is explicit data. It's data I shared on food sp spotting or places I checked in on uh, uh, Foursquare or tweets I made on Twitter. What about all this new frictionless sharing stuff? Like when I go and read something in the Washington Post, it tells Facebook that I'm reading that and it shows up in that ticker on the right yes. side. Yeah. Are you thinking of building another kind of lane for this frictionless sharing kind of stuff? So what we let in with here is where you are in full control of, of the content and where we want to control the you know, signal to noise ratio very much. Uh, we are looking into, of course, seeing how we can further add value to your lanes by including more data, but we want to be very careful that it doesn't clutter the whole experience of what it is that you actually want to present to the outside world or to yourself. Very cool. Tell me what the uh, user interface looks like to a user. Yeah, so so basically, you know, when you sign up as a new user, it's very, very simple. There's three steps, you know, you, you, you come with your email and password, then afterwards we'll ask you to uh, authorize with any of the type of services that you already are, are using on, on, on the internet, Foursquare, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it might be. And once you've done that, you basically can create your first lane uh, and that then presents everything you have done uh, and, and put that on a nice timeline, making it very easy for you to go back in time and, and, and discover that. Um, and then we emphasize that you can see it you can search it very easily, uh, and then you can also share it. So any of the you know great memories that you now have on your memo lane, you can uh, basically go in and say, "Hey, let me uh, put this and 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 retweet that on on Twitter or on Facebook." So you actually can put these type of emotions out there again. Very cool. Where do I learn more about it? on uh, memolane.com. And are you on Twitter and Facebook? We are on Twitter and Facebook and Google Plus. Oh, that's interesting. Are you rolling Google Plus into this as well? Yeah, so we actually uh, love everything around Google because they actually have some very cool APIs to play around with. And we were very lucky to be uh, some of the first to get early access to the Google Plus APIs. So uh, we hope that uh, we can bring out a good uh, Christmas present for all the uh, Google Plus fans. Very cool. I'm looking forward to that because I've written already, uh, I don't know, a hundred or multiple hundreds of posts and yeah. thousands of comments. So. Yeah, we'll bring that all to life. Thank you so much. Thank you.